first, our life first in this church. We thank God for all of you that are here today in the wonderful and the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every single name. I don't mean any harm, but can we just take a moment to give God another praise for those who are about the product I get excited about the process Amen. knowing that you have a goal in mind how God takes you on the journey to let you know that he's real and some of us don't have the products in our life today because we're fighting God in the process right, right. so I encourage you to help God by working with him and doing what he would have you to do so you can get the things that he would have you to do we have been in a series talking about the Holy Ghost. And a lot of times we preach, interact, and some of you I can see glaze over and miss some things and don't interact with the material because it's going so fast. And so the Spirit has told me a few weeks ago that He wants to fill someone or multiple people with the Holy Ghost. Now, a few weeks ago, I said that. I came here and said, right, Lord, show me that somebody wants to be baptized. So three people got baptized at two. I can't remember. Yeah. The same Lord has said to me that some of you are just right at the cusp of receiving this spirit. Even though you may not understand everything, you don't have to understand it to receive it. You just have to obey. Amen. And so we wanted to slow down and talk about what it means to be under the influence. If you're here for the first or second time, be, believe me, as the sister said, there is no such thing as a coincidence. All good and perfect gifts come from God. We're not talking about the influence of opiates. We're not talking about the influence of crack. We're not talking about the influence of your, the favorite drink in the world now. We're talking about the influence of the Holy Ghost. And a few weeks ago, we talked about the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament. Two weeks ago, we talked about the Holy Ghost in the New Testament. And today, we're going to look at some of the functions of the Holy Ghost. Because when you see the functions of the Holy Ghost, you want to realize that why wouldn't I want to have some of those things in my life? Questions are welcome. I know this is Sunday, but we're treating it like Jesus treated the Sabbath, but he did allow for questions. I only have one request. If you're asking a question from a purpose of understanding, please feel free. Today is not the day to ask questions that are skeptical or cynical. Those are Friday night questions. Uh, but if you want this, this is for people that feel that there's a void in your life. You are a Christian. You love God. You, you read your Bible. You pray. You, you, you do. But you feel something is still missing. It's the Holy Ghost. And for those of us that have the Holy Ghost, you feel sometimes the same way. Like I, I wish there was more. I wish I could be doing more. It's the Holy Ghost. Paul told Timothy, sometimes we have to stir up the gift that is in us. Anyone ever drink Kool-Aid? What flavor? What's your favorite flavor? Red. Red. Look at y'all. First of all, red ain't a flavor. It's a color. That's first of all. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be good. It's Sunday. I'm going to make fun of your ethnicities. But listen, when we had Kool-Aid, what happens when you pour the sugar? If you like me, you drank about a quarter of it with sugar. And what happens to that sugar? It settles at the bottom. The, 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 the Kool-Aid is not Kool-Aid without sugar. Kool-Aid without sugar is just colored water. And what do you have to do to make that sugar Stir it up. Have you noticed the difference between stirring sugar in something that's cold versus something that's warm? What's the difference? It takes longer. It takes longer. Why? Because it's cold. And if something is warm, it dissolves faster. Glory to God. Those of us that have the ingredients of the Holy Ghost, we have been baptized with water. Praise the name of our God. You have repented of your sin. That's the color. The pleasure of life. Through the blood of Jesus Christ. Red. 
and those of us that have received the Holy Ghost, that's sweeter than a honey. Now, honey won't pass the sugar. Sometimes the Holy Ghost, come on in if you want to, the Holy Ghost settles at the bottom. It's still there. Yeah. That's okay. That's our neighbor. She running. That's um, the trees, whatever. The Holy Ghost settles at the bottom. And every so now and then the enemy will convince us that something is wrong with us. No, you just pull out the spoon and you stir it up. And depending upon the temperature of the water, if you're a cold saint, you got to stir harder and faster and longer. If you're a hot saint, you just got to kind of do it a little bit. Yeah. But the point is, if you stir it, it'll be mixed up. So if you have some questions, please feel free to ask them. We talked in Sunday school about Joel. The Holy Ghost isn't anything new. The Holy Ghost was in the Old Testament and it was prophesied in the New Testament. A couple weeks ago, we looked at these scriptures. If you weren't here, feel free to go to the church Facebook page and you can re-watch or, re or listen to the last two parts of this sermon or series. Um, Romans tells us something that's really convicting. Don't raise your hand. But this tells us that if we don't have the Spirit, we don't belong to Jesus Christ. No matter how many good works I do, no matter how much philanthropy I do, no matter if I spend all of my time in church, if I spend all of my time reading my Bible, if I don't have the Spirit of Christ, I actually don't belong to Him. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to turn to your neighbor and give your neighbor the answer. It's a yes or no question. Can a person without the Spirit go to heaven? Hopefully you told your neighbor no. If you said yes, the answer is no. Not because I said, but because a gentleman by the name of Paul, who was writing to the church in Rome, said it. So the big question that everyone asked, and this is what splits churches, this is why there are several denominations that all use the same Bible. You know, we all use the same Bible, but this is what cuts down the middle. And I just want to tell you, I, I don't use denomination as a um, divider. I use it just as a qualifier because that's what people use. According to the Bible, how many churches are there? There's one church. There's one church, and that church is built upon who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, and who else? Someone said who? Peter, and what was Peter? He was a, an apostle, what the scriptures say, and also who from the Old Testament? The prophets. We are built upon the prophets and the apostles with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So the reason why we showed you the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament was for you to see that prophets could have the Holy Ghost. The, the disciples in the New Testament received the Holy Ghost. And Jesus Christ has left his spirit. He was the Holy Ghost in the flesh. And so he said, I'm going to leave my spirit with you. But I have an issue because on Sunday morning, many people are worshiping. And we all say we have the spirit. But how do I know? What's the biblical evidence that's left that I know that I have the spirit? Acts 2 and 38 says repent, number one. Repent means when I turn from, thank you, sir. When I turn from my sin and I turn to who? To God. Then I'm baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Why God chose that, I don't know. But wasn't Jesus baptized? Yeah. He wasn't even a, a, above that rule. When I go down in water, full submersion, not sprinkling, that was invented to make money for babies. When I'm fully submerged in the water, something supernatural happens. What happens? All of my sins are washed away. I'll never forget, we baptized someone from UMass Lowell, and um, he was from the streets, and uh, we baptized him, and uh, he got baptized, and it was taking him so long to walk from the pool. You remember? From the pool to the, to the bathroom to change, and they were like, what's he doing? And he's like, man, am I telling the truth? He's walking, he's just, he's just walking, and it's cold. And I'm like, what's wrong with this brother, right? I'm like, man. And he said, hold up. What did he say? He said something like, hold up. I just, it feels good walking with no sin on me. It feels good walking with no sin on me. 
And then he goes, <laughs> then he goes in the room. He was like, you know, what's some Christian jams? Finds uh, some music on his phone, and it's in the, in the, in the room, changes, just dancing to Christian music. He said, I never felt like, I don't know what it feels like to be right. The most beautiful thing, some of us that have been around church take it for granted, but when you have people who've never, this brother said, I don't know all this, all I know is I feel light, and I've been such a sinner, I want to make this moment last a little longer. That's what the Holy Ghost, when we're baptized, but the Bible says Jesus said we have to be baptized in water and the Spirit. And when the Spirit was given to the disciples in the New Testament, I know some of y'all, you talk about the Holy Ghost every time you come. I'm talking about Jesus. And you can't talk about Jesus without talking about the Holy Ghost. And you can't talk about the Holy Ghost without talking about Jesus because they are one. So, it's evident by speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. So the issue is that is this, this speaking in tongues the only evidence for having the Spirit? I challenge someone to share with me other evidence. Because when you say, well, it's Galatians. Well, Paul had already preached to the church and founded the church in Galatia that had the Holy Ghost. Well, you can say, well, it's Romans 10, where if I believe and accept God in my heart, say this in his prayer. Well, Paul was talking to a church that already received the Holy Ghost. Amen. So when we rightly divide the word of truth, I have to ask myself, if I'm a Christian, if I'm a disciple, if I'm doing all that I know to do to live holy, have I received the Holy Ghost since I believe? And I'm going to share with you some functions of the Holy Ghost that make it uh, 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 worthwhile for us to get or for us to keep and to continually stir up. It's more than religion. Religion is just exercises in piety to a being that's above you. I was looking at um, a, a documentary or something or reading an article about dudes that are into sneakers. And this one fella had like a, a, a safe, like a real bank safe. And his goal was to collect as many Georges as he could. And he just put them in there and that was, that was it. And he said his life revolved around sneakers. That's a religion. Oh, you're gonna call it sneakerheads? Well, but that's a religion. Because the, his Jordan brand was in essence his God. And how do I know? Because he created a vault in his house that had a bank safe that had to turn and open up to get in there. That was what he valued most. So, so any exercise in piety of something that we create above God, that's religion, okay? But religion is also the exercises that God has chosen for us to do here that show us and show him that we love him. Jesus said we have to be born again. And this is where some of us that are born again mess up. Because once we get born again, we say, I'm good. I know how it is growing up. Once you get the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, well, I'm good. And you live like a heathen. No, a person speaking in tongues, living like a heathen, will still bust hell wide open. Probably more so than a sinner. Because God said in Revelation, I'd rather you be cold or hot. Because at least then I know how to stir. But if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out. The worst thing that can happen is on a hot day, you go work out and your mouth is ready. You sweat, you pour some of y'all get nervous because you ain't worked out in a while or sweat in a while. Don't worry, come back a couple weeks, it's gonna be hot in here, you will sweat if you praise God. And you go to get a drink, and the drink is lukewarm. Worst thing. So, Jesus said, I have, not, 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 not me. When Nicodemus came and said, how do I get death? He said, you got to be born of the water and the spirit. And then the scripture goes on and Jesus is teaching in John, he said, but listen, the Holy Ghost has not yet come. You have to wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with this power. So the church begins, saints, in Acts chapter 2. Would you turn there? Acts chapter number 2. This is the church that we are a part of. God nominates, man denominates. 
I speak in every denomination's church. My dream is that you've heard me say is to speak in a mosque. And I want to preach the Holy Ghost in a mosque and try to survive. Amen. But I'm preaching Methodist, Baptist, Episcopal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is the, if we agree with this, then we can have a discussion. Yes. But this Jesus told the disciples, listen, wait there. I'm going to fulfill the promise of Joel. I'm going to fulfill the promise of Isaiah. And here's the issue. I'm going to do it to you and your kids, 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 kids. Do you realize that we are all descendants of Adam and Eve? So when he's talking about your children's children, he's talking about us receiving the promise. Acts chapter 2, verse number 2. This is when the first time the Spirit was given after Jesus died. Now there's a doctrine out there that says, listen, before you just have to believe that was before Jesus died. Yeah. You had to believe that this man that was walking, looking like me and you, was actually God in flesh. And God, because he knows the heart, he could see. Do you really believe it or not? That's how you got out of here. How did you get out of the Noah and the ark? You had to get in the ark. Right. And how many people got in the ark, by the way? Eight. Eight people. Eight people. This same God that loves us, the same God that blesses us, has judgment for those who don't obey. And if eight people only survive, it shows me that I better make sure I'm sure. Because the worst thing to do is to get to the gates and not have what I need. So even if I don't need it, I'd rather have it just in case. But you can't get to God half believing. He that cometh must first believe. Believe that it's real and he's going to reward you. So these folks, they told to go to Jerusalem and he told them to wait there. Some of you have been tearing for a while for the Holy Ghost. Keep on waiting. It says, when the day, verse 1, I'm reading from ESV, but was Pentecost was fully arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as of, not real fire, but like fire, appeared to them and rested or sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, of every nation under the heaven. There were Jews and devout people that worshiped God. And at this sound, the multitude came together. They were bewildered because each was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were astonished, amazed. Are not these men speaking Galileans? And, 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 and how is it that we hear each of us our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, um, Phrygia um, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews, proselytes, Christians, Arabians, we hear of them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed when they were published saying, what does this mean? But you'll always have people who are mocking, since others were mocking, saying they're filled with new wine. And Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, and said, men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem, let it be known to you and give ear to my words. These people are drunk. They're not under the false influence that you suppose since it's just nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel from the Old Testament. Yeah. In the last days, the last days basically, you know, in essence is when Jesus was born up until Jesus comes back. All that includes the last days. We're just most likely in the last of the last days. Right. Then in the last days, it shall be God declares, I will pour out my spirit. Is that capital S in your Bible? Amen. That means it's something distinct 
proper and specific. Not just any old type of gift, but the gift. It's going to go on all flesh. That's why let everybody come to church. I don't care what you look like, what you sound like, what you dress like. He said he will pour it on all flesh. And not just that, your sons, your daughters, and your servants in verse 18. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. And then if you skip over to verse number 37, Paul or Peter preaches a little bit more. And then in verse 37, he says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. You ever been in church and you cry and don't know why you're crying? Yeah. You read the Bible and you feel some kind of way. You pray, you feel easy. That's the spirit cutting to your heart. And these people weren't cynical. They had a legit question. They said, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent. Peter said, be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some of us need to underline the word will or shall because it's not a question of if I will receive it. It's a question of when I will receive it. If I repent, we will receive it. It says it's a promise for you, for your children, and to many that are far off. Say to yourself, I'm the far off. Because this happened years ago. And then it says here, what verse are we at? 39, thank you. It's unto you and your children from all who are far off, whom the Lord calls to himself. And with many other words, Peter bore witness and continued to exhort them. And as this is what we're saying to you. Save yourself from this crooked generation. And those that receive the word, saints, some receive it, some are sitting here right now receiving, some aren't. Those that receive the word, the Bible says, were baptized and 3,000 souls were added. This concept of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues is not atypical. And everyone needs to be able to pray in the Spirit. Because there are some things that happen in our lives that our normal intellect and language cannot help us with. Dig any tests. Would you please read that article? And I may skip you around a little bit. Listen, not that we need science to support what God is saying. But some of us are so analytical and we Google so much stuff. That let me make sure that Google is probably not going to pick this one up when you say, do I have to speak in tongues? Google's not going to give you this article that was researched by the University of Penn. So it's an it's a, it's a Ivy League school, okay? And it was a doctor who said, I need to study these people that talk about this thing that's happening in this Bible. And these people are saying it happens to them. I know how to prove it wrong. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to hook some, some neurons up to the brain and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask these people to start worshiping God. And I know I'm going to put a, a gospel choir here, and I'm going to put some folks that know how to get prayers through here, and I'm going to let them worship like they normally do. And everyone that speaks in tongues, hallelujah, I'm going to track that imaging on the MRI and try to find some evidence to say it's not really this spirit controlling you, it's something else. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania took brain images of five women while they spoke in tongues and found that their frontal lobes, the thinking, willful part of the brain through which people control what they do, were relatively quiet, as were the language centers. The regions involved in maintaining self-consciousness were active. The women were not in blind trances, and it was unclear which region was driving the behavior. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine have discovered decreased activity in the frontal lobes, an area of the brain associated with being in control of oneself. This pioneering study involved functional imaging of the brain while subjects were speaking in tongues. Radiology investigators observed increased or decreased brain activity 
by measuring regional cerebral blood flow with SPECT, single photon emission computed tomography. Imaging. That's for all the academics. I have no clue what that means. <laughs> imaging while the subjects were speaking in tongues. They then compared the imaging to what happened to the brain while the subjects sang gospel music. We noticed the number of changes that occurred functionally in the brain, comments principal investigator Andrew Newberg, MD, associate professor of radiology, psychiatry, and religious studies, the director of the Center for Spirituality and the Mind at Penn. So we're putting all that in there to say, not to bore you, but to show you his degrees. Okay, go ahead. Our finding of decreased activity in the frontal lobes during the practice of speaking in tongues is moving through them and controlling them to speak. Our brain imaging research shows us that these subjects are not in control of the usual language centers during this activity, which is consistent with their description of a lack of intentional control while speaking in tongues. So who's in control? Who's in control? God, the Holy Ghost, Jesus, whatever you want to call it. Jesus, not us. It's the spirit that gives the utterance. Go ahead. Newberg went on to explain, these findings could be interpreted as the subject's sense of self being taken over by something else. We scientifically Hallelujah. assume it's being taken over by another part of the brain, but we couldn't see it mm. in the imaging study where this took place. We believe this is the first scientific imaging study evaluating changes in cerebral activity, looking at what actually happens to the brain when someone is speaking in tongues. This study also showed a number of other changes in the brain, including those areas involved in emotions and establishing our sense of self. The amazing thing was how the, image, the images supported people's interpretation of what was happening, said Dr. Andrew B. Newberg. It's not our interpretation, it's what the Bible says. Yeah. Go ahead. Andrew B. Newberg, leader of the study team, which included Donna Morgan, Nancy Winterberg, and Mark Walden. Miss Morgan, a co-author of the study, was also a research subject. She is a born-again Christian. You're aware of your surroundings, she said. You're not really out of control, but you have no control over what's happening. You're just flowing. You're in a realm of peace and comfort, mm. and it's a fantastic feeling. Contrary to what may be common, uh, what may be a common perception, studies suggest that people who speak in tongues rarely suffer from mental problems. A recent study of nearly 1,000 evangelical Christians in in England found that those who engaged in the practice were more emotionally stable than those who did not. These are benefits. We've been talking in Sunday school about the benefits of pleasing God. And why does God have to wrestle some, I was one, wrestle some of us down to bless us? Receive the gift. So according to Acts 2.38, it's when I repent of my sins, when I'm baptized full submersion in Jesus' name, and I receive the gift of the Holy Ghost walking in a new life, living holy. Today we're going to, that was just a warm up. Okay. Today we're going to talk about the functions of the Holy Ghost. It is coming from John chapter 14 and chapter 16. So if you're taking notes, you can take a look at that. The first function of the Holy Ghost. This is not in order of importance necessarily. This is kind of in order as Jesus spoke it because we're built upon Jesus. Is the description of the Holy Ghost as a comforter. The comforter is an advocate. It's an helper. Anyone ever been guilty of something? Yeah. You took that cookie. You cheated on that test. You lied to that spouse. You've been God. We've all been guilty of something. But the comforter is a, is is someone who pleads another's cause before a judge. The comforter. We have an attorney here in the house, but there's an attorney or an, a lawyer that someone who's giving evidence that stands up in court. That's powerful because according to God's righteousness, who in here can be saved? No one can be saved. But we have a comforter that every time the enemy says, she did this, she did that, 
and, and, and you have the comfort of saying, but you died for that. You died for that. You died for that. The blood comforts and comforts you. That's why Paul said there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ because we have a comforter that's working on our behalf. So every time the accuser stands up in heaven and says, listen, that brother ain't been in church in years. Don't help them. Don't bless them. You have Jesus, the comforter, on the other side, standing up in court for your defense saying, but Lord, give him another chance. Give him another chance. The Holy Ghost isn't going to make us do things. He gives us the power to do what we already know we should do. Teacher, the Holy Ghost is described, is supposed to teach us. So it's a comforter, and the function of the Holy Ghost is a teacher, literally, to cause us to learn. Yes. Remember a few weeks ago, we read in Deuteronomy, how the Holy Ghost came upon people and they became builders? Yes. Listen, the Holy Ghost can override one's natural ability. Did you hear the sister say, I'm at this level, but I can go to executives and it's not me? What is it? It's the Holy Ghost. It, it, work, it works like this. Come here, brother. Come here, brother. Who's bigger? Turn around, face the people. Who's bigger? This is not a trick question. Who's bigger? This brother right here is bigger, right? So this brother's naturally bigger. So one can assume he's stronger, he's faster, he's tougher, maybe even smarter. One can assume that. And in life, this is how some of us are. This is what the sister described on her job. She may not have the pedigree and didn't come from the right schools of Harvard or MIT like everybody else. And so in the natural, it looks like this. Glory to God. It looks like this. But when you have the Holy Ghost, when the time is right, step up there, sir. The Holy Ghost makes you rise above everything else. Because he will bear you up. He'll give your feet to be like hinds feet so you can walk on your high places. You can't walk on the high places with God with the wrong feet. Some of us want the high places, but you got to go and get the right feet so you can stay up there. And when the Holy Ghost comes, your ability, natural, physical, emotional, spiritual, makes you, not in a humanistic way, better. Yes, yes. Makes you tall. No person saved should be average. Oh, Glory to God. Well, preacher, I'm a sanitation worker. Well, you shouldn't be an average sanitation worker. Yes, well, preacher, all I do is cut grass. Well, you shouldn't be an average grass cutter. No matter where I am in life, I, if you said in Sunday school, I want to be faithful. So if I am a sanitation worker and I want to own my own business, I'm going to work and walk like I already do. Don't dress and act like where you are, young folks. Dress and act like where you want to be. Thank you. Thank you. And if he get the Holy Ghost, he go up higher too. So the Holy Ghost will teach us Anyone ever been taught something by the Holy Ghost? Anyone ever? Raise your hand. If you have, no, you have a lot. Raise your hand. I have a silly story. My kids, you know, had this playhouse when they were little. They had like 50 pieces, and I threw away the instructions. After I had taken them to park, because I was like, they're too old for that now, but then they wanted it back up, and I had no instructions. And I was like frustrated trying to figure out and couldn't do it. And I, God was my witness. I was like, Holy Ghost, can you please, please show me how to do that? And about 20 minutes later, the thing was together. Don't sell the Holy Ghost short. When do I say Holy Ghost? Do I say God? They're where they want, you know. But don't sell the function and its ability short. If I'm a police officer and I have a badge, maybe that would be a good example nowadays, but I have a badge and a gun, the gun is simply to enforce what the badge can't do. But if I don't know how to use my weapon, what good is it? The Holy Ghost is like a functional weapon. It's a tool that's used, but many people are walking around with the Spirit of God and don't know how to use it. Don't create the environment that the Spirit can dwell in. God ain't talking no more. Yes, he is. If I turn off social media and the TV, he's talking. 
See, when I was little, you only could watch cartoons for like the first two hours of the day of Saturday. Because then it, nothing, would, nothing would go on, and then it would turn steady. Or you got the rainbow. There was no TV on 24 hours a day. There was no 24 hour news cycle. What happened? What happened? What happened with Trump? What did you do today? What happened? There was none of that. So God is the same today as he was yesterday, right? But our environment's changed and they talk on our attention. Well, God ain't doing no very well. Open our, open our eyes. So the Holy Ghost will teach us things when we're in the right environment. It gives us knowledge and it disseminates information. Not just spiritual stuff, but natural stuff too. You don't have to. School is great. And I encourage everyone to go to school and go get trained to, with your profession. But you don't always have to have that. You don't always have to have that if there's something that needs to be done and God gives you the power and the mind to want to do it, he has to give you the accompanying ability to do it. God doesn't call anyone to be a spiritual bum. Never. If, if you don't have, excuse the expression, a pot to pee in, that's spiritual bumminess. And the Holy Ghost either needs to come in and allow that to teach or to stir things up. Because he said, I will make you the head and not the tail. Yeah, he's talking to Israel. And no, it doesn't mean I'm going to be rich and live in one of the W's like Winchester, Western, or one of those places. But wherever I live, I can still be the best at where I am and give him the glory in all things. But I can't do that by myself. I need something to teach me. I need the function. Any questions with these two? I'm trying not to preach. I'm trying to talk. It's all right. It's a reminder. Anyone on the phone? I know you do. Phone. You still fix your screen. Phone. He has, I'm not going to read it, but he has reminders up here right now. Wi-Fi, some messages. There's a lot of messages. Phone, right? Don't, I thank God for my phone that reminds me. I call it like a brain extension. But you have an alarm clock. You have something that reminds you about important things. A calendar, a reminder. Do you realize that the Holy Ghost is a reminder? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It brings things to our remembrance. Some things that we may have forgotten about that it actually brings to our remembrance. And so growing up out here, my grandmother people said, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, I forgot. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because it's bringing things to your mind. Yes, yes. And, 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 and we'll talk in a minute about something. Sometimes the Holy Ghost brings good things to our mind. And we can dance. And then sometimes it brings bad things and we try to hide. Amen. Either way, it's good. Amen. Because it means the unction is functioning. Amen. It's a bad thing when our body's not dead to sin. If I do something and I don't feel a conviction, that's super, super, super bad. But the reminder is to cause us to remember like the goodness of the Lord. The reason why praising God and coming together in worship and attending fellowships faithfully, that helps us not be depressed. Because some of us have some lives that are depressed lives. Some of us have some weights on us that cause us to wake up in the morning and dare I say to wish we didn't wake up and then when we do wake up, we sit in the hallway crying. Because it's just, it's just heavy. And it's not, it's just life is heavy. The only reason why you're still standing and moving forward and breathing is because you have the function of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the church that God has given you because we're all not supposed to be here. Everybody has enough to cause them to go crazy at times or forever. But thanks be to God, you still may be a little off your rockers at times, but you're nothing like you would be without being having God. Glory to God. Nothing. And how do you know? Because when you see your old homies, you can you, you say, My God, there go I, but for the grace of God. That 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 could have been me. That should have been me. But God. And then I don't feel worthy. I don't know why, but it makes me want to live for him even more. So when you have these things, you come together, you're reminded that you know what? If this person got blessed with a house 
and don't have no more money than I have, then I can be blessed too. Yeah. You better get in her mind and say, what did you do? Because I want to do what you all did. How much did you give? When you were discouraged, how did you find your way to the church? When you felt like you were up, how did you keep going on? Because if I do that, then I have access to what God has given you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. The Holy Ghost is a witness, sir. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is, is a witness. The Holy Ghost testifies through us and in us. And you were all in the lesson. We talked about it in Sunday school. We, we sometimes think we got to run our mouths. And the devil will trick us and be like, well, if you didn't say nothing, then you're sitting down and you... Listen, the most important thing we can do is what? Live a life. My life speaks louder than my mouth. I preach every day and I only open my mouth if I have to. Because the life that we live is what's giving glory to God. Amen. I was appalled. At my job, you know, people know I'm a Christian, but it's not, I don't profess it. I don't, you know, I just do my job, go home. Get my check. But they had a function today, and they wanted my daughter to participate in it. And, um, and I'm in the boss's office, vice president. She's like, oh, we're going to have a rehearsal at um, 10, but that probably won't go for you because you go to church. I was like, how's she? You know, my church schedule. <laughs> Tell them she said, oh, we're going to move it, we're gonna move it to after church. I'm like, but you don't do that for me because I don't know if you're really coming. But no, so they moved it. They moved the, 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 the stuff from, from a dog. Like, well, we'll move it here because we know you got to go to church. I'm, the only, I'm like the only one in church. But I never, I didn't ask him that. Then the devil, well, you should have told this. Well, you should have verbalized it. Why if my life is? So don't feel guilty if you're not standing on top of the roof screaming, hey! No, just live a life because that's loud enough. And then people will come to you and say, what must I do to be saved? How do I get what you have? Because these brothers in the natural may look the same, but when the Holy Ghost lifts you up, people will always see a difference. They'll say, what college you went to? But it ain't that. They'll say, what's your last name? But it ain't that. They'll say, uh, what street you live on? But it ain't that. It's the Holy Ghost. What's the clothes you wear? No, it's the Holy Ghost. What's how your hair is done? No, it's the Holy Ghost. Don't sell the Holy Ghost short. And one of the things that wrecked my mind up is I was a heathen. I left the church, was living in sin, but for some strange reason, because of my mother's prayers, the blood still was covering me. And people knew I didn't fit in. So if I'm in sin like you, why are you asking me for prayer? <laughs> if I'm doing what you're doing, why are you asking me questions about the Bible? How do you even know that? Some of you are here right now because of the prayers that someone prayed that you don't even know. Amen. That people are praying for you. God will bring people to mind that don't even really know you. Lord, just bless her. I don't know her name, but just bless Just faces. That works. So witnessing also includes a natural verbalization because when someone comes before me, the Bible says I have to be able to answer that person. Everybody in their mama want to shout. That's the problem with the black church. <laughs> so why are you shouting about? I don't know. The music was hot, babe. The praise break. That, 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 that's a dance. I go to a club and do that. But when I know, hallelujah, uh -huh. and I think on the goodness of I'm shouting because I was a sinner. I'm shouting because God saved me. I'm shouting, I'm shouting just because of who he is. Yeah. I'm shouting because he's coming back. I, I, I'm just shouting because I need this weight lifted off of my shoulder. <laughs> I'm shouting because I want to exchange the garment of heaven is hallelujah to our spirit. I know what I'm doing. Those are the praises that God inhabits. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because it's connected yeah. to his essence. He don't inhabit a praise, hallelujah, that you do a Facebook praise and a, and a Snapchat praise and a, a praise. Listen, I don't care about any praise breaking. I want chains broken. I want people free. I want people to live. It only comes with the power of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power is a witness. And it gives a, a good report. And a, and a testament. And a witness that doesn't hold back. 
your testimony. Don't be ashamed of what you were and what you used to be. Somebody needs to know that and hear that because if they did it for God, did it for you, he will do it for them. You want to pray, saints, in your prayer closet, Lord, don't make me a stuck-up saint. Don't make me a snobbish saint. Don't make me a self-righteous saint to forget that that used to be me when I before I opened my mouth. I can still speak the truth, but let me do it in love and compassion and care for the soul and not be damaging and destructive so that the Holy Ghost injures them hardly when they're trying to find the Holy Ghost. But a witnesser is the function of the Holy Ghost. And it causes us to be bold. I don't have time to get into it. But if you read through Acts, the people would stand up and they, they boldly declare to the police chief, no, I'm not going to bow. And to the governor, I'm not going to bow. They were bold. When you know that you have the Holy Ghost, then some, 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 some things may come. We, we may be in a position where we might have to lose our job. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. If you're in a position where you have to choose between God's word and your job, my advice to you is to choose God's word. I've been there and had to do that. And it's, it's lonely. It doesn't feel good. It can be confusing. But the Bible says let God's word be true and let every man be a liar. I'd rather live in the projects down here and have a man up there than the other way around a mansion down here and go to hell down there I want to be where God would have me to be and then when I have the Holy Ghost the situations that I'm in I have the power to do a couple of things I can either go around it I can go over it I can go under it and here's what I don't like sometimes when it won't move I have to go through it but Jesus said I will be a comforter the other thing it is, is a convictor. Yes, yes, yes. And that's not really a real word. That's why the, the talus is there. It exposes. All right. Oh, that's why people don't like you. Yeah. That's why people don't like churches that, that talk and teach the truth. They don't like that. Because it exposes me. It's a light. And what happens? I know y'all don't have roaches. But what happens if you did have roaches? And you turn the light on? They run. They run. Somebody has them. They run. It exposes, it convicts, it reproves. This is the tough part of the way. It disciplines, it shows us to actually be guilty. Yes. That's what the Holy Ghost does. It shows us how our guilt. How to. And it has actual evidence against us. <laughs> and that, that's what the Holy Ghost does. They would say, my sins are ever before me. They would say, listen, I, 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 I've fallen short of the glory of God. Paul says, listen, I've done all these things, but I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, I'm not where I know I, I should be, need to be, because I'm still wrestling like everybody else. But I do know that although the Holy Ghost convicts me, it doesn't convict me to discourage me. It convicts me to comfort me to say that I already have the advocate. I already have God. I already have the power that he has given me through his word. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? These are the five functions of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now I have a question for you. Why would anyone not want these five things in their life? Why would anyone not want a convictor to say, hey, 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 don't go that way because it's dangerous. Go this way. Hey, 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 you know it hurt God's feelings, so clean that up. Why, why, why would I not want to be a witness, to have that testimony in the inside? That can encourage someone. The biggest investment you can make is in what? Say it. No. He said yourself, your salvation, assuming you have salvation, the biggest investment you will ever make is in a person. For God so loved the world, not that he blessed himself, that he gave his only begotten son to us. That's an investment that lives forever. God saves us and blesses us to be a witness, to be a blessing to someone else, to pay it forward. Yeah. Because better believe, if these disciples had sat on what they had, you and I wouldn't be here today. 
I don't know if Haiti was in the house. The scriptures don't support that. But I guarantee this, those, some of those folks there somehow got to Haiti. They got to Jamaica. They got to America. They got to Alaska. You just heard the article in England. Saints, listen, the Holy Ghost is already broken out in all these other countries. The Holy Ghost began over there in the Middle East and Europe and Turkey and Africa. It, 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 we're probably the last over here on this continent to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when we have that witness, it can function in us. Why would anyone not want the reminder to remind us about the goodness of the Lord? Because doesn't David say that I, I, I almost fainted when life gets heavy, when things get difficult? I, just what I'm about to think, the Holy Ghost reminds me of the goodness of the Lord. Yes. No, everything is not perfect. Jesus. You want to have their white dot paper, their paper with the black dot? Can I see that? Did this a few weeks ago in Sunday school. No, everything is not perfect. And that black dot we talked about represents the things that are wrong in our lives. The issues that make this paper not perfect. But our challenge is to, to allow the Holy Ghost to remind us that there's so many other things we can write in the white spaces that are actually blessings from God. Who would want a reminder that before I let the black dot depress me, before I let it discourage me, before I let it make me want to give up on God, give up on my marriage, give up on my children, give up on my life, that I have a number of other things to give God the praise for. The Holy Ghost is a mental stabilizer. Yes, you'll go up and you'll go down, you'll cry like everyone else, but weeping may endure for a night, but if I go through the night, joy is waiting on the other side. And so who would not want a teacher that's going to teach me the ways of righteousness, the ways of truth. Everybody looks at the church like, oh, there's a bunch of do's and don'ts. Listen, listen, the only rule in here is obey the Bible. If it's Bible, it's right. If it's Bible, it's true. If it's Bible, it'll live forever. And so teaching only comes through the word. How do I cleanse myself and how do I know which way to go? Psalm 119 says, I take heed to the word. I hide that word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so when I have issues with sin, there's no word in my heart. When I have issues in my mentality, there's no word. I may be reading it and it's making it from the pages to my eyes and to my head, but I have to meditate to let it sink down right. on the inside of my heart so it manifests itself in my behavior and my words. Holy Ghost, the word will teach you how to speak. I struggle with that sometimes because I'm naturally a pessimistic person at times. Hallelujah. But the word has to teach us and we have to allow it to say, listen, I know you think you're going to die, but the word said you're going to live. I know you think that this black dot is going to be here forever, but the Bible says I can go through it. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. And if it's heavy on you, give me a little bit because my burden is easy and my yokes are light. The teacher is the Holy Ghost to give me the information to keep moving ahead, to keep pressing forward. Young people keep pressing forward in school on your jobs and most importantly press forward and receive the Holy Ghost the enemy wants to lie to you and say you don't really need it that's just a church thing no it's a Bible thing it's a Jesus thing someone said I'm Jesus only and I'm so glad I'm not conservative I'm not independent I'm a biblical Christian that still believes in the power of the Holy Ghost. I still believe that someone that cuts themselves can be made free. I still believe that someone that has never been told I love you can receive the love of God. I still believe that anybody who's broken, busted, and disgusted can still be somebody in Jesus Christ. I still believe that God can redeem the time. You may have dropped out of school. It still don't mean you can't be nothing but 
most of all, above all this, I still believe that God washes away sin. I still believe that the blood works. I still believe that Jesus is the only way. I still believe that he's the truth. He's the life. If you want to get denied, you got to go through Jesus. And if you want Jesus, you got to get the baptism. You got to get them tongues. You got to get them tongues. You got to get them tongues. And when you get it, let the ocean function. Don't be ashamed. Walk with your chest out. Walk with your head out. No, I ain't broke. I get looking like rabbit ears. But I'm still blessed. No, I don't have the latest designs. All of my Facebook posts are me and my best. Because people don't see me in my worst day, but I'm still blessed. I'm still blessed. I'm still blessed. Last time I checked, I got the water, I got the Kool-Aid, red, and I got the sugar. I just gotta stir it up and then taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Let me borrow your coat, brother. I feel the Holy Ghost. I ain't gonna ask you to take off anything else. Just a coat. My grandmother and my aunt Ina, they make something called quilts. Hallelujah. And they give them to us as mementos and tokens of kids and marriage and different things. But what do you do with a comforter? You put it on your bed, right? And sometimes if this is your bed, you put it down toward the end just in case you need it. My feet get cold. So I slide my foot under the comforter. Hallelujah. If I get a little warm, I slide it out. Listen, some of us are in situations, but we're not wrapped up in the comforter. Let the Holy Ghost comfort you. Because when I get cold at night, when I feel that I can't make it, I feel like I'm all alone. My wife, my my mama, my daddy, my brother, my sister can't help me because everybody will get in a position where only God can help you. It's not your family's fault. It's not your friend's fault. God positions everybody to a place where they have to know God for themselves. But thanks be to God that give me the Holy Ghost because when I feel like I can't make it, I can wrap my Myself in the comforter. Yes, sir. And I have what I need to go on. Wrap myself in Jesus Christ. He'll keep me warm. He'll keep me from falling. Jesus and the comforter. That's my kryptonite. Hallelujah. That's what keeps me safe from being overtaken by the world. So let the comforter come for you. I know you're guilty, but you're covered. I know you're not innocent, but the comforter will cover you so that when the enemy says, I know what's under there, God says, I do too. I don't see what he used to be. I see what he is in me. He's blood washed. He's covered. I see my original intent and design. This represents sin. It represents the world. It represents decay. But when the comforter washes you with the blood, you are a new creature. You may look the same on a natural, but you're covered. You're covered. You're covered by the comforter. He's your advocate. Who stands before you? He's your intercessor. He's your defense. Jesus is the comforter. And he's all I need. That's why the enemy wants you to think you don't need the Holy Ghost. Baby, you better get it. Show up here on Friday. Start calling Jesus right now. You don't come to church for me. You don't come to church for the devotion leaders. You come to church for Jesus. And you have an experience.
experience that nobody else has. Everybody's singing. Everybody's preaching. Everybody's reading a holy book. But how many got Jesus on the inside? Make me run when I don't want to run. Make me jump when they tell me not to. Because the Holy Ghost is real. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, we 